Hello, this is Overlord Boat, and we're back with another how-to, and today we're going to be talking about the legendary mods in the Research Bureau. Now, this was a viewer-requested video that someone asked me about on stream, and it was something that I don't see a lot of people talking about, so let's uh, get right into it. So, the legendary modules, we got, they're, well, they were called legendary models, they're now called unique upgrades. Uh, you can only get them now for Research Bureau points. And they cost 19,200 research points. Now, this is one double times uh, line reset or two line resets. I'd highly recommend uh, you go watch my How to Research Bureau. It goes into detail on how you should use research points and how to farm them as well. Because uh, today we're just going to be focusing on... There's over 25 legendary module upgrades, so we're going to have to go through them pretty quickly to talk about all of them. So, let us start us off. The Audacious is legendary upgrade. Uh, it makes it where the ship's detectability is negative 15%. Squadron boost duration is plus 20. Rudder shift negative 30. And negative 50% for the full engine race acceleration. Now, would you recommend this for the Audacious or no? Say T score. Uh, I would generally no. Even though it allows the Audacious to play a lot closer, I don't expect many uh, CV players to be able to use full advantage because of autopilot limitations. You have to manually control it to get the best usage, and unless you're very good at positioning, I don't recommend it. Alright, so what about the next one, the Daring? It makes it where the Torp reload is 10% uh, faster reload with 15% torpedo damage. So it makes it where it does a lot more, it's a lot more uh, torpedo focus. Would you recommend this? Uh, I believe this occupies the fifth slot, so that means no. Daring is not very good with torp- it's not meant to be a torpedo boat anyways, just use guns. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the Harugumo, uh, pretty much Vape Nation? It gets a plus one consumable with a plus 100% smoke duration and a plus 30% uh, smoke screen dispersion uh, time. Uh, yes, I would recommend the Harugumo Ledge mod. It enhances her ability to lay a longer smoke, which helps mitigate the problems of everyone throwing torpedoes into it. And since you get an extra smoke, that means you have more, basically you have more time to farm in smoke and you get a bigger smoke screen. Both of which are essential for Haruguma to farm, to farm safely within. And this also can be used in clan battles too as well, right? And ranked. Having that longer dispersion means you could also smoke up uh, in a straight line where you can put a lot of non-smokable cruisers in there. There's a lot of strats with cots and in clan battles, even in ranks where I've seen Haragumos or other DDs with longer smokes do that. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the Kleber? It makes it where the ship's uh, detectability range is negative 20%, but plus 80% being battery reload. It kind of makes the ship more stealthy, but at a cost of a longer reload, this, yeah, this isn't worth it. With the plus 80%, that adds about 4.8 seconds. So it makes this reload around 10, I think it's around 10 seconds for the Club Air, and that's not worth it at all. You're basically playing a 55 knot Shim F3 Shimakaze. So probably not a good idea with all the planes around. No. Now, what about the Kremlin upgrade? This is kind of... It makes it where the number of consumables are less... You take away one. Main battery range is 12% nerf, but your reload goes down by 18%, so you get faster firing guns. I, I wouldn't recommend this at all because the all of the Russian BBs have a limited number of DCPs, so if you're taking one away, you're literally getting one less ability to put out fires, so I wouldn't recommend this at all. So, let's just move on straight to the Harkiryu. Would you recommend the Harkiryus? Yes, I would recommend the Harkiryu. Uh, you can, uh, this will allow you to spend more time, less time inside the ship's AA during strikes, which is very, very important. Uh, you don't have to boost outside of it, but once you get into AA range, you start boosting, you get in, you get out quickly, and you minimize AA damage. Highly yep. recommended. Now, what about the midways? Midway, kind of an eh. It basically increases uh, increases your damage and the, uh, the fastness of your bombers. But overall, it's not as ubiquitous as 
as your t uh, typical tier 6 upgrade. It's something I wouldn't recommend, mostly because it doesn't, it's not much better than your standard upgrades. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the Groza Boys? It has a negative 18% reload, so it's buff, plus 20% torpedo reload time, and negative 7% ba main battery traverse speed. So it pretty much makes it where you're, the Groza Boys is more focused on gunboating rather than torping. Gross Boy is meant to be gun boning anyways, so the plus 20% to torpedo reload time is not a not a concern. Okay, I, no. I, can't, I would recommend this. Okay, now what about the Yu Yang? Yu Yang, uh, this one is mainly for clan battles. If you are using the if you're using the Wi-Fi, you can take her for her long duration smokes and constantly smoke up your Nevskis. Otherwise, I would not bother with a YY in randoms. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the gearings? Gearing is a kind of a coin toss. It will bring her detection down to 5.6, which is pretty nice, but at the, at the cost of considerable increase of reload time. So this is mainly if you're going to do a support gearing, which you can do if you have teammates. Yep. Uh, what about the Shimmas? Shimakaze... Another another coin toss. Uh, the traverse speed looks it's only seventy percent, but it's actually considerably worse once you actually try it out. You only gain like a minus ten percent to reload time compared to your t uh, minus fifteen percent on your. Well, this tiers, one's negative on twenty five percent. Negative twenty five percent. Yes, but compared to the but it's compared to the standard torpedo upgrade in tier in slot six. That one gives you fifteen percent. Oh. So you're trying, so it's not much different. I wouldn't recommend it because it doesn't do that much. It's not really much different. Okay. What about the Z52s? Nope. I would. I would not recommend it. Uh, you don't want to lose it. Uh, you don't want to lose your detection ability. Like getting faster reloads. Uh, getting faster reload is nice, but it's not worth the cost of uh, worse detection. No, nope. Con uh, concealment's the most important thing on a DD, so you don't want to sacrifice that at all. Now, what about the Kava? Now, this one has a plus 10% firing range, negative 6% battery reload, and a negative 20% action time. This one is okay, but I wouldn't recommend this since it just doesn't change the copper as much. It allows you to fire from further out, the main battery range being pretty useful. Mm -hmm. but otherwise, it's just not worth 20,000 uh, research points. Yep. Or what's practically just a side grade. Now, what about the Moskva? Moskva... Mo the, uh, the decrease in dispersion is very useful for Moskva. Uh, it it actually did get nerfed a while back, but I'd still recommend it over your standard upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the boosters? It adds one percent of the con it adds one number of consumables, negative twenty percent of the reload of ship consumables, and plus twenty percent priority A sector preparation time. Sorry, negative twenty percent. So it makes it where you have a higher sectoring of your AA, so it's faster reloading when it comes back. And the faster in the faster reload of your consumables, so you can pop your radar, sonar, DFAA, and heal faster. Not something I would recommend from the research bureau, but if you happen to have it already through previous missions, then go ahead and try it. Now, what about the Des Moines legendary mod? I was a big fan of the legendary mod until the meta started to be way further range, so I switched over to a range mod. And I haven't, I have been, I've been super happy with my change, like switching to an over to a range mod. Uh, it used to have, uh, it used to be much stronger, but then Wargaming nerfed the Des Moines Legendary mod. And so, especially with the change, especially with the meta being shifted to much further ranges, I can't really recommend it on most people's Des Moines. It's still okay, but it's, but again, the cost is just too expensive mm -hmm. for what it does. Yep. Now, what about the Minotaur? Minotaur? No. Uh, Minotaur is generally not used in comp unless it's radar Minotaur. And the unique upgrade uh, just changes how the smoke works. It's not worth it enough. It's not really an improvement, but more of a side grade. So I would not recommend it. Now, what about the Henry's? It makes it where it's plus 10% detectability range. Um, and plus 8% firing range and a negative 
uh, reload time. So it gets a reload buff, longer range, with a cost of 10% detectability. If you plan on running the Lighthouse HIV build, which is basically no concealment, then yes, this is actually a excellent mod to pick up, as it synergizes very well with the Lighthouse build. Otherwise, if you're running the standard HIV Henry Ford build, where you're taking both concealment, I would not bother. Okay, now what about the Henrys? Uh, sorry, the Hiddenbergs. It gets a negative 50% main battery repair time, negative rudder, uh, rudder shift time, 40% uh, fire extinguish time, and 70% flooding recovery time. So it pretty makes it like a super super heal like a super repair time pretty much makes it where it's flyers floods damage guns it just gets repaired super quick uh i wouldn't recommend it uh although it sounds good on paper hindenburg is a cruiser and cruisers already get reduced uh fire flooding and uh fire and flooding times so that part is not very useful main battery repair time also not very useful Rudder shift is about the best you can get out of it, but why not just take a two million rudder? Sh why not just take the uh, rudder ship upgrade? Yep. Very so true. unfortunately, this is not useful. All right. What about the Zows? Zow, this one used to be better with rudder. Sh it previously had rudder shift, but that got removed, and because of that, I don't think it offers enough to be worth the worth taking. Mm -hmm. You may as well just take the increased uh, battery, main battery range and just call it good. Yep. Now, what about the Montanas? Now, this one's pretty similar to the Hindenburg, but on this one, it's a 30% rudder shift time boost, a 70% uh, steering gear repair time, 10% fire extinguish time buff, and a flooding recovery 10% buff. Would you recommend uh this for the Montana? Uh, it's okay. If you happen to play Montana a lot and for some reason have uh, have a CV in every match, then yes, I would recommend this. But otherwise, again, it's pretty expensive, so unless you love playing Montana and happen to run into a lot of CVs where concealment's not, where concealment is uh, pointless, then yeah. That's the one of the few times I would take this upgrade. Okay, now we only have four left. What about the Yamato? Now this one makes it where... Your maximum dispersion of the main battery is 7% buff, and a main battery traverse speed nerf of 13%. This is pretty much just a buff to your dispersion, which makes it a lot more accurate. Now, would you take this on a Yamato, or would you not take it? So, the uh, battery traverse speed is pretty bad, but at least uh, you get the feeling of Deadeye every time you pull the trigger. So, if you want your shots to actually hit where you're, where you're shooting at, then I would recommend this. And if you're playing Yamato quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your standard reload increase is probably good enough. Yep. Now, what about the Kerr first uh, main uh, s special one? I do use this for my Kerr first build. Um, I do like having... Actually, no, I don't use this one anymore. Mm, no. No, I have it. I have it for this for my, my ship. Instead of going full secondary spec, I put this one instead so that I could get a, a main battery buff and the secondary reload buff. But it just reduces your range by 8%, which it doesn't hurt too much if you're trying to play more of a brawler. But if you're trying to play longer range, which I wouldn't recommend it occur first, I wouldn't I wouldn't take this one because it's nerfing the range. Um... It reduces the range to somewhere below 20, which I find to be uncomfortable during most matches. And also, probably the reason why you see so many curve for suiciding into the enemy. If you are playing, if you're playing co-op or just bef or just like brawling, then yes, this is a solid pickup. Mm -hmm. But if you're if you want to try hard in the curve first, then I don't recommend this build. All right, now what about the republics? This one makes it where its main reload time is is a buff with 18%, but it nerfs your range of guns by 24%. That sounds painful. Yep. It brings the Republics from about 26 kilometers to uh, somewhere under 20. A little bit too much to be considered good. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just take the standard... I'd rather take the standard re, uh, main, battery, main battery mod 3, and that's good enough. 
No yep. need to spend 20k on this. So, for the final one is the Conqueror. So, it gets a buff of 40% to rudder shift time, 80% uh, steering gear repair time, and main value to first speed by 13%. It makes them faster. Would you recommend this, or would you not recommend this one? Uh, it doesn't really fix any of Conqueror's problems. It just kind of turns her to a cruiser, which is nice, but it's not really that much of a... It's more of a side grade. It's real like if it was a free one, you can probably consider it. But considering it costs twenty k to even try it out, I would not recommend it. Mm -hmm. But yep, that is all of the unique upgrades in the research bureau. If you guys have any questions, def definitely let us know. Thank you all for your suggestion for this. If you guys have any other suggestions for how tos, definitely let us know down in the comments. We'll definitely consider them. But yep, that's it for the day. Thank y'all for watching and I'll talk to y'all later.